In this video, I will show how I grew these large tin crystals. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Plutonium Bunny. First, I grabbed some tin and melted it down in a small steel can crucible before pouring it out into a nice blob-shaped ingot. Mmm, beautiful. If you listen closely, you can hear it making noises as it cools. I then soldered on a small wire as this is the anode that will be eaten up during the crystal growing process. I also sealed this anode with some caulk before proceeding to make a small tin cathode from a strip of tin. With the prep work done, it's time to move on to the actual cell. Now for the actual cell setup, I'll be using this clean baby food jar as the container for my electrolyte. And I'll be using this solution of about 90 grams per milliliter of tin chloride dihydrate. This is the tin anode I just showed the casting of. So this will go straight in the bottom. just like that. And the tin electrolyte will go right above it. And then to top it off, I have the tin cathode where the tin crystals will be deposited. That will sit right on top, just about like that. For the power supply, I have this small wall wart adapter, which is then hooked up through a breadboard to this LM317 adjustable voltage regulator circuit. Basically, the LM317 regulates the voltage based on the resistance of this potentiometer and this resistor combined. It's powered by the wall wart. And then I have a series of six diodes and that drops the lowest available voltage from the LM317's 1.25 volts down to about a quarter of a volt. And that lets me get much lower voltages for the crystal growing cell, which translate to lower amperages and better, larger crystals. I have this 1 microfarad 50 volt capacitor just for smoothing the output. And then this red wire goes to the anode and this green wire, the ground, goes to the cathode where tin metal is deposited as crystals. Here's the final setup with the LM317 circuit powered and connected to the crystal growing electrolyte. The multimeter that is here is measuring the current, so it's about 13 milliamps, which is approximately where it should be, just very low current, definitely below 20 milliamps for the whole process. This other multimeter is measuring voltage. It's pretty low under load, which is also fine. You know, as long as tin is depositing, that's all good. And there is the crystal growing electrolyte bath. I will leave it for a few weeks, checking to make sure the current and voltage stay low, and it should grow a crystal. Here it is, not even a week later. And as you can see, the tin has made some very nice crystals. I've been stirring the solution about twice daily just by swirling the jar around. And it looks like it's clouded up a little bit. So perhaps some of the tin chloride has started precipitating. You could fix that by just adding more acid, the hydrochloric acid. But the tin looks like it's starting to grow down toward the anode and I don't want the cell to short out, so I think it's time to be done. The resulting crystal broke into two pieces as a result of a period where tin was not depositing, so it's always important to make sure that even if the voltage is low, tin metal is still depositing as evidenced by growth on the crystal tree. Here is the tin anode after washing, and I just thought it was really cool how the act of being dissolved into the hydrochloric acid tin chloride electrolyte kind of etched the surface of the tin away and showed these crystals. 
So actually underneath the surface there are some pretty large crystals in this piece of tin. Here is my second try at the experiment and now I have two LM317 circuits because I am powering this small DC motor which is connected to the small plastic tube out of a pen and I just flattened the end and that is acting as a very low RPM stir bar. I also have the small strip of tin back in there and it's really not running much current about 10 0.9 milliamps, and that says 150 millivolts, but I wouldn't trust it. It gives weird readings sometimes. So I'm hoping that the constant slight agitation will help to keep the densities of tin salts well mixed, and so then I won't need to swirl this. I think swirling the jar to mix it up agitated some particles that were clinging to the anode, and that perhaps caused more nucleation sites for the crystal. Good things are happening. Well, it looks like the crystal is growing quite close to the anode, and it also looks like there are some nice, flat, shiny crystal faces. So I think it is time to unplug it and wash it off. This crystal turned out quite well with a variety of large and small crystal faces. I made some 360 degree video using a microwave turntable motor, but I still wanted better crystals. I reduced the concentration of the electrolyte by about 30% and tried again. The new crystal grew practically overnight, yet it turned out over 6 centimeters high. It is to my knowledge the largest solid tin crystal tree on YouTube. Each crystal arm is very wide and flat, which explains the rapid growth as compared with crystals grown at the same current. Even so, this experiment produced crystals that maintain their shape outside of water, unlike most other experiments. With such great results, I'll need to try crystal growing using more metals, so please like and subscribe to see more crystals.